Well, growing up is pretty much all I did was ride. I didn't want to do anything else, and I'm pretty much still the same way. <laughs> you know, my dad would saddle my pony. I'd make him wake me up when he'd go outside at 6 in the morning, and he had my pony saddled, and he'd just leave him tied up all day, and I'd go out with him every every colt that he rode. I went out with him, and pretty. I had one pony that I eventually had to carry a stick because he got a little bit... He didn't want to go. He was fine once he got away from the barn. He just, you know, I got him tired. <laughs> um, usually when we go branding, there's there's a lot of calves to get branded. There's usually at five to six hundred at my um, dad's family ranch. So we'll usually, me and my brother usually get to do a lot of the roping. So, but I mean only because we had to do most of the wrestling when we were younger. So now we get to rope, but we'll take a trailer load of horses. We'll take three and four year olds usually. It just seems... It's, it's the best training for them is being in the branding pen. and We won't rope a lot on the three-year-olds because they are still pretty small, but we'll, you know, drag about ten calves on them to the fire and then let them rest and get on the four-year-olds and kind of do the rest of the work. But it's, it's amazing how it, can, how it can just calm a horse to be in the branding pen and just having all the commotion going on and then, you know, them getting just a little bit tired and then getting to relax holding the calf. It just you know it just makes for a great horse you know the more brandings you can go to the better you know if you could go to 10 on a on a horse in a spring I mean you're gonna have a heck of a horse by the end of that baby colts um, I mean the outside horses that we get we that first week that we do with them our baby colts already do so what we'll do is just uh, the groundwork like flexing like bringing their nose back to um, their, where the cinch is and just getting them real flexible that way just re responding to um, you know if you want them to go to a certain direction just basic manners is what we do and we we saddle them right away we get on them that first day you know if they're not too bad some some you'll get that are really bad and you might not get on them until the second day but we get all we usually are on them all the first day and sometimes I'm a little bit more cautious than the guys and I'll say why don't you get on first but usually I'll get on them the first day too. It just seems like if after messing with them all that time you just have to get on them that first day. <laughs> turn out. You know, it just seems as if you can put the miles on them, they all turn out if they've had a the right start. So you know, I think there's a lot of definitions of what um, makes a cowgirl. I mean it's hard to pinpoint it because there's there's a lot of people that I know that are cowgirls that do a lot of different things, whether they have a job or you know, have to be in office eight to five. And, you know, they come home and they have to work hard on the ranch too. But um, I think my my true definition of uh, what is a cowgirl is um, compassion for animals. You know, truly, truly in, enjoying being around them, whether it's you know the horses or the cattle or you know just just wanting just wanting to make things good for them. Um, liking to go out by yourself riding and being able to, you know, enjoy that and, you know, working hard, working hard outside all day and then, you know, coming in and can cook a meal too. You know, I, I think a lot of um, my family, the women in it that are that way, you know, they can go out and work as hard as any man and come in and put a meal on, you know, you know, the, I think they're tougher than men, you know, the only only thing is we just can't lift as much. <laughs> it's our only downfall. <laughs>